Adjusting time periods is a fundamental part of any Power BI report. And this is often done by your users selecting a date range to filter the data that they need to see. But here's the thing, there are common patterns that your users might be selecting. For example, users will generally want to see the last month or the last six months or the last seven days. These are common patterns that your users are manually adjusting every time. Well, today we're going to learn an easier way for your users by selecting buttons with a predefined range that automatically filter your data. It makes your reports easier to use. It's really easy to implement. So let's go ahead and learn how to do so. But before we do, I'm Raja, the Power BI guy, and I teach Power BI, SQL, and Excel content. So for more videos, do like and subscribe. But on that note, let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off by understanding how our period slicer works and the logic behind it. So we have all of our order dates and if we select let's say the last seven days what we'll see is we have our maximum order date and then our minimum order date is adjusted based on this maximum and then our selection. So if we select let's say the last three months what we'll see is our maximum order date is then adjusted three months backwards. Then if we select last six months, it's doing the same thing. So we have our maximum order date, which is static, which is then adjusted for our minimum, which gives us a range to see our values. So let's start off by creating our maximum order date. So to do this, we'll create a new measure and let's call this measure max date. And what we'll do is calculate our maximum order date and then now we want that order date or that maximum to remain static. We don't want that to be adjusted based on any filters. So what we'll do is use the all function to remove any filters that might be brought in from the superstores table. So let's go ahead and take a look at this to actually understand what it's doing. So if we bring in all of our order dates into a table and let's change this from a hierarchy to our actual dates. And if we bring in our new maximum calculation, what we'll see is we have all of our order dates and then the maximum date is now remaining static against any period. So we have that static maximum date. Now let's work on our minimum date that is adjustable based on our selections. So we'll start off with a very simple one and do our last seven days. So if we create a new measure and let's call this our min date, and for this, we'll be utilizing variables. As we have multiple calculations, we're later going to be selecting between our variables. But for now, let's start off with the last seven days. And for this, we have our maximum date. So let's bring in that calculation and then minus six. And then if we return that and actually, so we can see our result, let's go ahead and take a look at what it's doing. So if we bring that calculation into our visual, we have our maximum order date. So let's bring that in. So I'm going to sort that. The 31st is our maximum order date. And then if we go back six days, so six there from our maximum, what we'll see is that's the 25th and that's returning our minimum date. So we have our first minimum date option. Now let's work on our month to date and we can actually use that calculation for the rest of our periods. So if we create a new variable and call this month to date, then let's utilize the end of month function, which returns the last day of the month from a date that we specify. So if we bring in our maximum order date, and let's say that was the 28th, Eon month will then return the 31st, which is the last day of the month. Now, if we're doing a month to date, let's go back one month to November. So if we do minus one, it will now go back one month to the end of November because it's always the end of the month. And then because we're doing a month to date, let's go ahead and add one day and that will now bring us into December. So let's go ahead and see what that does to our minimum date. So if we change this to month to date, we should now see this become the 1st of December. So we now have our month to date, we can utilize this calculation for our other periods. So instead of month to date, let's do last three months. And instead of it going back one month, we can make it go back three. And then once again, let's copy this and use this for our last six months. And instead of three, it will now be six. Our year calculation works slightly differently. So if we call this one year to date, and this time let's specify the date, bring in year to actually extract that. Let's bring in our maximum date calculation. So max date. And now we want to say, get out the year and then the day. 
And then for our all, so this is all of our period, so any date, let's call this all, we're just going to get our minimum order date. So it's just going to get whatever our minimum order date is. We've created all of our calculations. Let's move on to our buttons that we select to change our different periods. So to do that, let's create a blank table. So if we select enter data, and for our columns, these are actually going to be our slicer options. So let's do last seven days, month to date, last three months. If we copy this, we can just adjust three to six, year to date, and then all our entire data set. And let's call this column our slicer options. And our second column is going to be the sort order. So if we have it in a slicer, it actually follows the order we have here. So let's call this order. And let's just place one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And let's call this table uh, slicer selections. And then if we load this and bring in slicer options and then convert that to a slicer, we now have our various options for our periods um, able to be selected. But the order is not correct. So let's head over and select slicer options, sort by column, and then order. And now it's in the correct sort order. Now our actual selections are not adjusting any of our data, so it's not connected to any of our values. So let's head over to our min date calculation and work on the selected value adjusting our various calculations and what one it's performing. So to do that, let's create a new variable and then call that selected. And what we're going to utilize is the selected value function, which essentially just returns what the selected of our slicer options are. So if we bring in our new column, what this is going to return is whatever we have selected. So now what we can do is an if statement that says if our selected value, the result equals the last seven days, return this calculation. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we utilize the switch statement, we can say the selected value uh, and that's last seven days. So this is our actual option that we have in our table. And if we have that selected, return the last seven days. So let's go ahead and close that and see how that's behaving now. So our min date calculation has now gone blank because we have all selected. If we select Y today, once again, it's blank. But because we've now said in our calculation, if last seven days is selected, then use the last seven days calculation. So now we can just apply that for all of our other dates. So let's do that by just creating more statements. So we can do month to date and then return the month to date calculation and then let's repeat that for all of ours so last six months and now that we have all of our options so we're saying if month to date selected return month to date all is selected return that etc etc so let's take a look at our slicer now and it's adjusting our minimum date and our maximum date is remaining static so now we can work on our values between these two dates and this will be our final calculation so to do this now, what we're going to do is create a new measure. And for this, we're going to create a dynamic sales amount. So let's do calculate some of our sales. So our sales column, and then keep the filters because we want to retain our filters between these two dates. So we'll do keep filters between dates between, and then our order date column, and then between our minimum date, and our maximum date. So if we bring that into our table, what we'll see is if we set last seven days, it will be our minimum starting date is the last minimum and the maximum date is over here. And now we have our dynamic sales value that we can bring into any visualization. So let's go ahead and delete that and create a line chart for example. So if we bring in our dynamic sales and let's bring in our month, we're going to see we can adjust this to all and it will show the whole sort of date period that we have in our data set. If we select year to date, that will be the same. But if we set last six months, we can now see the last six months. And we can demonstrate this working by creating a card. And if we bring in our dynamic cells, as we need that sales amount to be dynamic based on our selection. So if you wanted to do profit instead, you could copy this and this time use profit. It doesn't matter. But now if I select year to date, we can see that changes, last seven days, etc. So this calculation, dynamic cells, is linked to this slicer. And this works with any visualization type. 
it does not matter because this sales amount is dynamic. We can change this to profit or any other sort of calculation that we want here. So this could be a measure, but that's essentially how you create your dynamic uh, filter. Now for the formatting of our buttons, what we'll do is turn this into a tile slicer. And from our tile slicer now, let's go to layout. Let's adjust this to one row. Let's show six columns. Let's make this slightly thinner and wider. And then for our shape, let's turn that to a rounded rectangle. Bring the corners to where you're comfortable. It's completely up to you. Actually, I changed that. Let's set our default state to a gray. And then our selected state, let's change that to a blue. And then when we change between our various options, we now have our buttons and we can just bring that into our visual. And if you'd like, you can set the callout values. So let's go to our callout values and let's center those just because it looks slightly better in these buttons. And if you want a hover state, you can go to buttons again and then just set a hover for your blue. So let's set that to blue. So when we hover, it's very clear. And that's how we create our dynamic slicer.